So you've been spending most of your day looking at a screen, on your phone, on your crusty black computer chair, and all you see is negative news. Breaking news, more deaths, more violence, more chaos. Is there any wonder why your mental health isn't great? Guess what that hardcore feminist will say to you when you go on a walk? Nothing, because she doesn't go outside. Guess what that racist guy? Nothing, because he doesn't go outside. Get all of these little people that you see arguing on Twitter and, and Reddit and like all this beef that you see. It all happens on the internet and nothing more. This is something interesting that you can try. Leave your phone behind and go for a walk and just say hello to the people that you walk past and just see what happens. See the attitude that people carry in their normal day-to-day -day real lives. You'll begin to see that all of that, that dark thing, that controversial shit, all of that hate, that negativity, it, it stays online, especially in terms of dating. So you're a young man watching videos like this. Chances are you're watching a lot of videos on like red pill, black pill, how to get girls, how to not get girls, why girls don't like me, why 90% of men are unattractive. This is like in its own, little bubble on the internet and you realize in the real world no one thinks like this you watch fresh and fits podcast and you're thinking oh yeah these these hoes like, uh, go on my like fucking destroy these hoes and then you go outside and none of those people are outside because they stay indoors all like they literally sit there on instagram all day the, the podcast hosts and the guests the thoughts and the male thoughts all these like negative ass people they literally just spend their days inside and i want to like slap you with some truth right now when you click on a hamza video you better get ready for this okay you're one of them. You're one of these people. You're one of these people who just spends most of your day indoors. You're one of these people who spends most of your day in the internet. If you are truly on self-improvement like you say that you are, if you are truly following the principles of Adonis, you have to detach away from the internet. And this is where like, I feel like I'm a little bit special in terms of like, you know, these YouTube videos compared to other YouTubers. I actively discourage you from watching my videos. You will never see another YouTuber who says that shit because this is their business and this is, you know, you know, I don't blame them because this is their business, this is their livelihood, but it shows that they're choosing like view counts and like income over movement, purpose and mission. You can look on my channel. I've made many videos saying that you should stop watching my videos when the time is right. Why? It would be fantastic for me if you carried on. If you clicked on every single one of my videos, bro, I'd appreciate that. But I'm not doing this for my own personal gain. I make these videos for you so that at least you have someone who's on your side. Because everyone else wants to steal your attention away from them so that they, their business profits, so that their podcast is like popping off. Oh, we've got 700, shut the fuck up. We've got 700 downloads. And all you're seeing is this negative ass news. When, if you go onto Twitter, you're a fucking weirdo, bro. People literally go on, like, people go onto Twitter just to be made upset at like, oh my God, this guy's posting like misogynist Oh my God, this guy's being racist. Who cares? You don't see these people outside in the real world. When you watch all these YouTube videos, you have like this lens, this perception of what you think real life and what people are actually like, because of course, you know, you're watching people. And so with the videos that you're probably watching, you're probably thinking, oh, well, w women only want to fuck alpha males. And like, oh my God, you know, I need, I need a better jawline if I'm going to attract these girls. You're thinking all this shit, bro. You go outside and no one's fucking thinking this stuff. You go outside and everyone's just normal and happy and pleasant. But if you spend all your day indoors, of course, you're going to feel negative. Of course, you're going to feel depressed. The real world is so much more positive than you think it is, but it's just so much easier and more comfortable to stay inside. But men grow from discomfort. If you're staying comfortable, you're not growing. I want to ask you right now, and I want you to be totally honest. How comfortable have you been over the last few months? And no, don't bullshit. You know, my, my workouts have been kind of hard. I'm just shut the fuck up, okay? I'm talking about real discomfort. I'm talking about challenge. I'm talking about like a disruption to your routine to see if you can optimize things further, to see if you can challenge yourself and go out there and get out of your comfort zone. Because I'll tell you from my experience, when I spend longer than about an hour on the internet at a time, and I'm on YouTube and I'm on like Discord especially, even Discord's like the productive social media because it's like my own server and stuff. When I spend more than an hour, I start to like notice the negative mental health consequences that come from that. I've always known, I've got like quite a good level of like self-awareness, I meditate, I do a lot of journaling, I do a lot of like, I only ever have like deep conversations, I'm not like a guy you have a shallow conversation with, I only ever have deep conversations with people, so of course like realizations come about in my normal life, in my conversations all the time. And so I always get this thought like, the majority of people don't even realize how negative they're feeling because of this, because they don't have that level of self-awareness. 
It's kind of like if you're really, really fit and you eat clean all the time and then you have one bad meal full of sugar or you have some alcohol or you have some junk food and then you feel it the next day, like you can really feel the difference and you're like, wait, hang on, you know, this feels fucking awful. I feel slow, I have my mental fatigue, I, like, you know, this brain fog, I'm like slow, I'm, like, I feel a little bit sickly, my stomach kind of hurts. This is how some people live every day. But now these negative symptoms that I have right now is like their baseline. It's not a good way to live. You have taken this path of holistic self-improvement to improve every part of your life and your emotions, your mental health is the most important part of that. To have your mental health deteriorated just so that you can have some like nice dopamine feeling of like, oh my God, you know, Instagram, <laughs> or YouTube controversies. It's not good for you. We like, you know, me, the creators, bro, we make money from you. We make money from your attention. We make money from making you feel negative. And what I say here is in orders of, of magnitude, I'm sounding kind of smart right now, in orders of magnitude, more important, especially if you find yourself going down like subcultures of the internet. And that was my story when I was about 17, 18, and I discovered the red pill. And I'm talking about the real red pill, not like the shit that you might see on YouTube, like these little fucking YouTubers. I'm talking about the real red pill underground forums, like the type of shit that got banned from Reddit. And I read that every single day, and I posted every single day on this pursuit to become like the alpha male and, you know, learn how to like game women, how to pick up girls and all this, to learn all of that. And you don't realize how much of your mind gets consumed and committed and tunnel visioned into like this specific way of thinking and so you are so certain everywhere you go that you know this is how the real world is women only want alpha males and like you know they'll act like this all women will cheat on you all women are thoughts all women are hoes and yet the real world is so much more positive and loving than it actually seems and if you watch these kinds of like react videos of like dating and um black pill videos and you know it's all this like oh you know girls are girls are being so mean and so so rude and this girls are saying oh i only want a guy who's over six foot bro that doesn't happen anywhere near as much as you think like you know you see these tiktoks like people will share them onto youtube saying like oh yeah see this is the truth like you've got to be six foot otherwise girls don't want you bro that's some weird girl who's made a tiktok you don't see these people in real life you don't see these people outside they don't go outside these motherfuckers who make like weird ass like anti-male like anti-men content anti-female content these people who make any kind of like anti-person content anti-gay anti-trans they, they don't go outside the real world is so much more positive because all of the cretins all of the hateful people what do you think they're doing where do you think they get their the biggest feeling of importance that none of these people I want you to think of like these hateful people these like negative ass people they don't have the confidence to act like that in person and so they stay inside in the safety of their homes and they write about it on Twitter and they make TikToks you know being like mean to each other and you're consuming that so you want to know like the quick fix how to fix this press the power button on your phone press the power button on your fucking computer that's it it's that simple it's that simple. It's not easy, but it is simple. And what's the real practical advice from like weird, weird, like Hamza level practical autistic? I shouldn't even say autistic as an in, as it's not even an insult the way that I say it, but I, I do notice that I say it quite a lot when I'm saying like, oh, well, here's the ad advice I want to give you. It's autistic steps. Am I being mean to autistic people when I say that? I've got to check my privilege, bro. I'm going to check my, my grammar. It's not even grammar, is it? <laughs> the weird practical advice. Take a walk every day. It's as simple as that. Take a walk every day at the same time if you want and go out exploring, maybe listen to like your favorite music, something calm and go for a, a nice like jog or something and do this every single day. Because I know right now you're thinking, oh, well, you know, this, this is boring. I thought he was gonna say something way better than this. I promise you right now, if you just implement this and maybe if you go to the comments and you'll see people who already do this and they'll be like, oh yeah, it changed my life. It's as simple as taking a walk every day and being outside without your phone and actually just like observing the people that you come across. You're not seeing girls who are looking at you like, oh, you're not six foot. You're not seeing them, some fucking alpha male around the bush ready to fucking fight you or something. You're not seeing some racist guy there. You don't see this, this stuff when you go out in public. When you take a big walk, like a long walk every day and you go for like a jog, you just get outside more often. Get away from these screens, get away from your bedroom. You realize that the majority of people that you walk past, especially if you live in like one of those beautiful small towns, like where I live. I'm, I'm in Thailand traveling right now, but like back home, I'm from Warrington in the UK. And everyone's just so peaceful and so loving. They're all like old people just walking their dogs. I really hope you can experience that because at the end of that kind of like red pill, you know, like I was reading it every day. I was living in a different city and my perception, of course, you know, living in the city compared to the town really makes a difference. But I remember my perception of people was so much more negative and so filled with like anxiety. And why do you think that was? I experienced totally, okay, this is going to be the truth. I experienced like traumatic shit. Like I literally had PTSD from a racist attack that happened in 2018. I've, I've mentioned the story. I'll briefly tell you. 
like on this video, but I've mentioned the story like so many times, but um, after the Manchester bombing, so if you can like Google that if you want, Manchester bombing, it was in 2018 in like Ariana Grande, like musical concert. There was like a terrorist attack there. And after a terrorist attack, like racism and hate crime really spikes up. And I was working part time as like a receptionist. I finished work at 8 p.m., go to the trains. I always used to work, like I had a little bit of anxiety before this and you know, like a little bit of fear of like, not so much the dark, but like, the racist. Our family's been hurt by racists and all everything like. But I get there and there's like commotion in the train station where I'm going to, I'm taking the train back home. There's like this bald headed guy and his friend, like his tall ass fucking friend. They're like screaming, screaming, screaming. And I kind of, you know, go around the corner and it's on my station, like my stop where I've got to go. But I walk past and I realize like he's screaming at this woman in like a hijab and she's got like a little like child like this. And she's like, you know, trying to protect the kid and stuff. And it's fucking weird. It's like he's screaming at her. And you know, you might say, oh, well, Hamza, you, you know, it's your fault. You might, you shouldn't have been the, the hero. Like every bit of advice you ever hear online in terms of, you know, what to do when this shit like this happens. I fucking hate advice when I see it. Cause it's like, oh, run away, run away. Oh, oh, there's danger, run away, run away quickly and call the police. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up, bro. If you saw that situation and you would have run away, I'll call the police, bro. You're a, I'm supposed to tell you, oh yeah, stay safe, bro. You're a fucking little bitch. You're a little bitch. If you see like a racist man at like harassing a woman and you fucking run, I'll, I'll call the, the authorities. You're a little bitch. We're supposed to defend. So I tried my best and I like, I said some shit back to him and I kept some distance away from him because he kept on getting closer and closer and his friend had like a big ass fucking like wine bottle and he was holding it up like, he was holding it like this. This is like one of the weird memories. He was holding it like this, like in his hands, like just kind of like getting a little bit closer. But he was also, his friend, the tall guy was also saying like, oh, you know, it's okay. It's, it's come on, come on, bro. It's okay. And it's it, the, the guy who eventually got arrested and it's a whole fucking, and people think I'm lying about this. Google a fucking name. Sylvester Soloki. Google the name right now, Sylvester Soloki. There's like articles about him. The articles like mostly speak about the racist shit. They only like briefly mention, if you like really read the article, that he had a fucking 12 inch knife on him. And that's what he was trying to use on me. Every time he was walking towards me, leaning into his fucking waistline. <sighs> PTSD from that moment especially related to public transport. I would take train, bro. I took my first like few trains years after. So that was in 2018, it was about 2021. And I remember, bro, you, you wanna know some fucking truth. You know, you wanna know like, you know, I'm a big, strong, oh, look at me, Hamza's got muscle, he, he trains Muay Thai and stuff, bro. I used to message my video editor Sam, right? I used to go on the trains, like sometimes I would take a fucking three minute train into town center. So there's a train station close to my house. I would take one into town center. I would be on the call with him. I would be texting him, like literally, like I needed him as like my accountability, like cause I was fucking nervous taking a three minute train. And he would be texting me, so, like, you know, it's gonna be okay, like, you know, you're doing so well, like this is so new. There was a time when I took a train to Manchester, so like from my, my current town back to like Manchester. And I remember like I went for like a party in the middle of COVID or some shit. And I literally remember how fucking anxious and sweaty I was because of that. Why am I bringing this up? Because this video is supposed to make you feel safe. It's supposed to, you know, tell you that the real world is more positive. And it is, you are always gonna be at risk for some traumatic event like that happening. And it's so easy right now to be thinking, oh my God, you know, oh, trains are dangerous, racist people. You know, it's so easy to think that. That was one event in 2018. In the last four years, nothing has happened. One day out of a thousand, the odds are stacked in your favor that these things don't happen that you enjoy a very safe and positive and calm environment when you go out. But the reason why I bring this up is because my perception after this, so this was in my first year of university, just near the end of the first year. So I still had my second and my third year of university. That's when I really had like bad mental health and I was really like anxious and really, you know, like I had PTSD, but I didn't actually know that I had it. I didn't know what mental health was at the time. And so when I would go outside, I had this like very negative, anxious filled perception of people and of the environment around me, especially of Manchester. Manchester's like, if you don't know about Manchester, it's like, it's a pretty big UK city and it's very well known for like literal like gang wars and a lot of drug related crime and stabbings. It's like, it's a very like, it's, it's a beautiful city full of beautiful people, but it's also got like a very like dark side to it as well. And so I'd be going out and I literally would always have this perception that, okay, well, I'm going to meet someone who's going to try and hurt me. It happened one day, you know, the whole train station incident. And for hundreds of days afterwards, I had that negative belief. Hundreds of days of my life 
were contaminated with thoughts like this and I chose to stay inside and miss out on life's opportunities and experiences. I dated a girl who somewhat, you know, she kind of knew what happened and stuff and she didn't necessarily do this because of that, but she was just a very like serving kind of girl where kind of she would go out and do things for us and I would stay inside. And you know, I never kind of like made it clear that that's, you know, why I was staying inside. But a simple things is like we'd order food a lot on like, you know, like Deliveroo and Uber Eats and you know, you've got to like go down to the ground floor of like an apartment to go get the food. And she would go down all the time. Now I used to almost act like, oh yeah, like, you know, I'm the alpha male, like she goes down for me. But the true reason was bro, I was fucking terrified of going downstairs in my own apartments. Why? Because of my a heartbeat would go faster when I was leaving. I start sweating a bit more. I'd get like constant, constant, constant. For like fucking, co I have to say the word constant like five times so you know what I'm talking about. Constant, intrusive thoughts, violent thoughts, visualizations all the time. That lasted for years because my neg my perception of the world was so negative. And you know, fair enough, like there is like, you might argue, but there is like a good reason for you know, there to be that. But even if there is like a good reason to have this negative perception of the world around you or to have these anxious thoughts, it's not helpful. You don't grow in any way because of this. You stay in your comfort zone and, and you get more and more secluded away from life. And honestly, after a while, you're not even living. Living like a real life, a life where you go outside and a life where you meet people, a life where you talk to people, a life where you have opportunities and experiences. There's always gonna be a sense of danger. There's always gonna be a risk of danger, of, of negativity, of mistakes, of failures. Obsessing over the negative, which is what can happen so easily when you spend too long on the internet and you see, you know, constant shit. Because think about it, look, you could go on this video to try and get some hope. You know, the real world's more positive. You might feel more anxious just because of what I've just fucking said in this video. Like I've just told you, you know, the racist attack that happened. Now you're like, oh yeah, shit, like racists exist. And like this, you know, they're gonna think I'm a terrorist too and shit. You see how the internet, like I didn't even mean to do that, bro. But do you see how this video has just defied the exact reason why I made this video? Because negative things to talk about just pop off more on the internet. You stayed hooked on this video because I just told you the story of something dangerous, of something dark. If I just told you a story of like, oh, you know, bro, there was a time three years ago when I went on a walk and uh, uh, someone smiled at me and nothing happened. <laughs> it would have been a boring ass video, but our brain automatically pays attention. It's like a part of our brain called the amygdala. And it's kind of like the lizard brain, that's, you know, like the Jeffrey brain, that's like paying attention to dangers of anxiety. And it wants to know all of the risks involved right now. So it pays attention. You've got to understand like the internet and all these software developers and these creators, we understand how like brains work. Of course, I'm not a scientist, I'm a bro scientist, but having just a small understanding of like how the human brain works, how like human psychology, social psychology, allows people to really like manipulate your feelings manipulate your thoughts. I can keep you hooked onto this video for as long as I want because I can speak in a certain way that hooks your attention. If I told you another dark story right now, you'd, you'd be paying attention. And these things would stay in your mind and the next time you go outside, the next time you go to a train station, the next time you, you hear someone's name is Sylvester, the next time you think about me in public or something, you get this negative thing of like, oh shit, like Hamza almost got killed by that guy. Like, I, I'm not sure if he was like, gonna like try and kill me, kill me, but like he had the capacity to, I guess, because he had a fucking massive knife on him, but yeah. I don't feel, I don't know if this video has helped you at all, bro. <laughs> Makes me want to not go outside at all, man. I might just close my balcony. You want to see the Thailand sunset? Hang on, the, the vid's kind of dark though, but... I think this video has just made you more scared of going outside, so I apologize, my friend. <laughs> it won't happen again. <laughs> But try that practical advice that I recommended. Just in the daytime, when you feel safe, just go outside for a walk in your community. Maybe start venturing a little bit further and further. And like, you know, this is the type of stuff, like don't tell your mom you're doing this. But like go outside to like streets you've never been to before. Go a little bit further from your house that you've never like walked to or ran to or cycled to. And just experience like different parts of the society around you. And just notice the people there. And even if there is some kind of like negativity, even if there is like a fear of danger, part of being a man and taking on the world is overcoming that is facing those problems and dealing with them and not hiding away from them courage is a beautiful thing and courage is the act of doing something in spite of fear so i hope this video ignites some courage inside of you you can subscribe to our channel if you want to welcome to the cult do the hard work especially when you don't feel like it Mwah.